In this lesson I'm going to show you how to serialize objects in PHP. So when you serialize an object you convert it into a string which PHP is able to read and reconstruct back into an object at another time. Before I get into this let me just remind you that I record in high resolution so don't watch on a blurry screen, choose high definition if that works for you. Would you like to join a growing group of PHP developers and take your skills to a new level? If that sounds like you, all you need to do is subscribe and click the little notification icon and welcome. Let's start off with the same kind of setup as I did for the cloning, just two simple classes. One is a manager and one is a department which can have a manager property. And so I'll new up a department which I'll call department1 and I'll give it a name of IT. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to serialize my department1 object and I should get a string back from that. So we'll go and have a look at this in the terminal. What I'm going to do is at the top of the file is require once my vendor autoload PHP file and then underneath here I'll just dump out my department one string. And so like I say this string is formatted in a way which allows PHP to read it, see what the properties are, see what the object is and reconstruct it using just this string. Let's add a little extra complexity into it to uh, demonstrate what it can do by also adding the manager property, which will itself be an object. So department one manager equals new manager. Uh, the manager of our IT department will be Bill Gates. So a use case for serialization might be when you want to store an object in a database but you don't want to take up a load of fields or you might want to write the string to a file and we'll demonstrate some of that stuff when we come on to the practical. So as you can see here we've now got the extra property in our string and it looks like our object may have been preserved with all of its properties. Let's now unserialize this and by doing that it hopefully should recreate the object and I'll save this into a variable called department2. So department2 equals unserialize and then it's the string which we just created and we'll dump this out and see what this looks like. Okay great so it's totally reconstructed our object the way that it was serialized. But is this is department2 a different object to department1? Let's change the name property on the department2 manager and we'll change it to my own name and then what we'll do is we shall dump out both department1 and department2 and see if they are indeed different objects. And so as you can see the manager for department1 is still Bill Gates but the manager for department2 is myself. So this is pretty cool, it looks like we've discovered a way of creating a deep copy of department one, a alternative to using the uh, clone method. So if I was to serialize and then unserialize department one and store that into department two, then I should have a deep copy with one line of code, with less code than what I used when I used the clone method. So let's um, change again the manager name of department two and we'll dump these out and just check that we are still getting the same result there. And of course we are because it's just the same code except in one line. And in fact this is a recognized technique for creating a deep copy of an object. So if you see this in someone's code and you think it looks a bit strange that they'd serialize and unserialize something, then that's probably what they're doing. They're just creating a copy of an object. Okay, so let's look at another magic method now and this one is called sleep. The purpose of this is to tell PHP when you serialize an object which properties you would like to be serialized. And like all magic methods you don't call this directly, this gets called behind the scenes when you use the serialize function. And what you need to do is just return an array of the names of the properties which you would like to be included in the serialization. Let's take this for a test drive now. So I'm going to serialize my department one object. As you can see, it has a name and a manager property. But I've said in my sleep um, method that I only want to serialize the name. And so investigating the string here, we can see there's no manager 
property has been saved to the string, we can only see a name property. Let's just prove this properly by unserializing our string and then we'll be able to go and look at it as an object which will be easier for us to read I think. And so we'll dump this out and then again in the terminal so we have a department but you'll see we only have one property which is the name the manager property is not on the department 2 object. By the way, if you find this stuff interesting and you want to put it to practical use, I do that in one of the projects in my complete object-oriented PHP developer course. The link is in the video description below. Now, as well as having the sleep method for when an object is serialized, we also have an ob a method for when an object is unserialized, and that is called wake up. And so this is used for Perhaps when you have a complex object with lots of dependencies, something which can't all be serialized, you might want to re-establish those dependencies or things like a um, database connection when you actually unserialize the object. So we'll test that out and there you go. We all, all I've done is just echoed out to pretend that I'm re-establishing a database connection on that one. Okay, at this point I should point out that it's not just objects which you can serialize, you can also serialize all the other types in PHP. So we'll try a few of these out just to demonstrate them. I'm going to serialize a string here. We'll dump this out and see what this looks like. And so it's prefixed with S colon 9, string with 9 characters. Let's serialize a boolean, false, so B colon 0. Well, how about true? For that we get b colon 1. So you start to see some of the logic behind this. Let's serialize an array so this will look a little bit more complex. And we'll dump this out. And so the a colon 2 so it means an array with two items. And then this i0 and this i1 means index 0 and index 1. s2 means a string with two characters. s5 means a string with two characters. So hopefully you're getting used to how you actually read these things now. But let me show you another option which might be a bit more flexible. There is a interface called Serializable which has two methods and we'll go and have a look at this. It has two methods. One is Serialize where you serialize a object into a string representation and an unserialize method where you unserialize a string into an object re representation. But the thing with this is it's more flexible than the standard unserialize and serialize functions in PHP. And one thing which I should point out is that when you implement serialize and unserialize, then the wake up and the sleep methods then become redundant and these no longer get called. The main advantage of these two new methods is that they give us more flexibility. We're not constrained to um, the format which PHP gives us for serializing an object as a string. So we can encode it as JSON, which is what we're going to do in this example, but you could also create a CSV string or XML, or indeed any format which is meaningful to you that you can use to actually reconstruct the object at a later time. I like JSON, it's fairly universal, it means that I could um, encode this into a JSON string and then using a HTTP request send it to a completely different system where it could be read by a completely different language and still understood. If you're not too familiar with JSON it stands for JavaScript Object Notation and we'll see a, uh, an example of that in just a second. So I'm going to serialize um, department 1 into a department one string. Behind the scenes, my serialized method will get called. And so this first part of the string looks similar to what we've seen serialized so far, but the second part of the string, this is purely JSON, which is not specific just to PHP. We can store this in a JSON file, in a database, or like I say, we can send it over a HTTP request using a JSON API. Now, because we've controlled how our object gets serialized, I'm afraid that means we also have to control how the object gets unserialized. So this will be a little bit more complex than if you were just leaving PHP to handle it for you. But we can figure this out. The first thing I'm going to do 
is JSON decode the serialized string. That will give me an object of standard class. And so that has properties on it, which I'll just take those properties and assign those to the properties on my department class. So JSON department name gets assigned to this name. Manager is a little bit more complex. For that, I need to new up a manager class by saying new JSON department manager class. And of course that takes uh, one argument, which is the manager name. So JSON department manager name. And then all that's left is to go on and serialize this and see if it's actually worked. So we take our department one string and I'm assigning it to uh, department two variable. Then we'll just dump this out over to the terminal, run that. Okay, great. So it's totally reconstructed our um, department one object. Well, in fact, it hasn't reconstructed um, our department one object. It's constructed a copy of the department one object. And just to prove that, we'll go and um, change the department two manager's name and we'll dump out both department one and department two. And just to prove they are both different objects existing at the same time. And that's exactly what we get. So department one has manager Bill Gates, department two has manager Gary Clark. This stuff's redundant now, the sleep and the wake up methods because we're not using those anymore so we can delete them. And that brings us to the end of serialization. If you've enjoyed this one and found it useful, then be sure to give it a like. And please don't hesitate to share if you want to help other developers like yourself. That's what good developers do. And one last thing, if you want YouTube to show you more of my content, all you need to do is subscribe and click the little notification icon. I release new recordings every few days. Details of my schedule can be found on the community tab of my YouTube channel homepage. I'll see you in the next one.